Okay, so good morning everybody and welcome to the next edition of the PA Forum Zoom series. Um, delighted today, one of my passions, um, I'm really glad to bring this to the forum, is travel, hotels, events, etc. So I've got three very, very close contacts, amazing people who are joining us today um, to come and talk and give you a little bit more of an update about what's going on in the hotel travel, business travel and leisure travel sector. Um, so... Um, please, if you want to fire any questions over during any time, pop those into the chat box and I'll make sure I ask those for you. And there'll be lots of time at the end as well for you to ask any, any questions and hopefully we can give you some answers. So joining us first today, um, I'm delighted to introduce Chris from Click Travel. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hi, Dan. You all right? Yeah. Yes, very yeah. good. You okay? All good, thank you. Yeah. Good. So... Um, Click Travel are um, a, a business travel agency that they, they look after air, rail, hotel bookings, meetings, events, venue finding and lots, lots more. Um, so I can imagine, Chris, that when all of this hit, it was a little bit, wow, <laughs> a lot, a, a bit big bang all at once, was it? Yeah, it, it was. Um, a lot of people, you know, at first were thinking, you know, this is a bit like the ash cloud, but it's been a bit like the ash cloud times like a million um, almost and obviously gone on for, for so much longer. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's obviously hit the travel industry um, incredibly hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's been, um, I think especially some of you that book travel um, probably had to make a lot of cancellations, a lot of amendments, et cetera, who are on the call. Um, but um, what I was really, Click Travel are PA Forum partners. They supported us during the uh, Learning and Development Conference last year and are also partners for the West Midlands PA Awards. And I've seen that they've got some fantastic things coming up with them, especially with the Click Care Initiative as well. So can you give us a little bit more information about that, please, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah, in terms of click care, I'll, I'll give you a, 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 an overview um, in the next few minutes. Um, obviously, we know that the last few months have been, you know, really quite extraordinary for both the travel industry and also for each and every one of us in our day to day lives. Um, we had social distancing, government restrictions on non-essential travel and the closures of international borders all happening in a very short space of time. Um, but here at Click, uh, it was possible for us to help our customers manage these new restrictions very quickly within each of their online booking platforms. Um, so yes, it's been a challenging time, um, but one where we've been really focused on how we can help customers understand the COVID-19 situation and manage the impact from a traveller's perspective. Um, we know that going forwards, our customers want to maintain control and help their travellers stay safe when they're ready to start booking more business travel as well. Um, so what we've been doing is proactively helping our customers handle government restrictions and give them total peace of mind that they can ensure compliance alongside the reassurance that if something changes whilst their travellers uh, are out travelling, um, they can easily track where they should be and those employees can receive the latest important updates about their trip as well. Uh, so we've, we've taken the time to, to repackage and improve various duty of care elements of our platform. Um, so that each and every one of our customers has access to our Click Care offering. Um, it's totally free um, forever. Um, there's a huge range of flexibility within this package um, that really is making managing this ever-changing situation um, as easy as possible. Um, but there's three distinct areas where we deliver value, um, which are managing risk before booking, taking care of travellers after they've booked, but before they travel, and then taking care of travellers whilst they're on their trip as well. Um, so before booking, we're helping organizations introduce additional controls, which can range from simply locking down certain bookings from being made um, to approvals being needed before a booking can be made from maybe management and HR travel risk teams if needed, um, to simply just notifications of bookings being made and daily reporting of new bookings. It all really depends on how much control is needed by an organization and that organization's view on traveler well-being. Um, we can also have multiple travel policies in place, you see. So for any organization that is focusing on certain groups of travelers having different restrictions to others, they can do that as well. Um, if we see that certain cities or regions are defined as being COVID hotspots, and an organization wants to restrict bookings to certain locations, um, but enable travel to others, we can introduce those measures fairly swiftly. 
Um, I know certainly at the start of March, when some countries started to lock down their borders, we were able to introduce additional restrictions for customers within 30 minutes to ensure that no bookings could be made to those places. Um, or for some organisations, they just took the opportunity to block all overseas travel completely. Um, but we can also work really closely on supporting any changes that customers make to their travel policy by collaborating on branded in-app messaging that has their company logo. So their users know it's an official internal update. Of course, these updates don't need to be policy related. It could be a general travel update that they wish their users to read and be aware of the next time that they log into the online booking platform. Um, but I'm also very aware that tra some travelers may feel uncomfortable or nervous about traveling again in the future. And with that in mind, we've been working closely on collating as much supply information as possible, such as what top used airlines are doing to tackle social distancing, how train operators are taking extra measures to reassure travelers, and, on ho and how hotels will be focusing on health and safety of guests with enhanced cleaning guidelines. While all of that information is available to our users within our help center, we are also actively working hard on how we help users be more confident in their hotel choices within the platform when searching availability by introducing some clear indications for users to know that the hotel they select is better equipped to be handling things like social distancing and enhanced cleaning protocols. Uh, we know that when it comes to booking hotels, there is a huge amount of choice available. Um, so we feel that we can help make the lives of bookers a bit easier and let them feel more confident in choosing the right hotel. Um, all of that happens before a booking gets made, um, but if I move on to what happens after a booking's been made, but before travel has started, um, we know that it could be that travel advice changes after making a booking. That's where it's important for organisations to know who they have travelling where, and for those travellers to also get the latest guidance as well. Um, certainly our reporting gives any travel managers information on where they have travellers due to be at the touch of a button. We've got future dated reports which clearly identify what regions they have bookings to. And this is particularly crucial for any organisation who chooses not to implement any restrictions or approvals on the booking of travel, but just need extra visibility of the bookings that do get made. Um, we also have the ability to pump out messages to travellers too. Uh, we manage this in a couple of different ways. Um, I mentioned earlier on that we have in-app messaging, um, but also travellers can receive disruption notifications from ourselves via email or text message. Um, so I know certainly any of our travellers that unfortunately had travel booked at the start of March when FlyB ceased to operate will have had updates from us via text message on that morning. Um, and anyone with travel booked to any of the countries that started to close their borders down also got updates from us on those new restrictions. Um, all of this, of course, is backed up by the fact that we provide 24-7 support for travellers around any incidents that occur whilst an employee is out travelling. Um, we've got a crisis management team here at Click who has been busy um, and they really provide peace of mind that should a major incident occur, we will complete a traveller location search on the behalf of our customers and make sure that they know who may be impacted. In addition to this, our customers also have the ability to, in the platform, to run their own location searches too. It's incredibly easy and very quick to get this level of information at the touch of a button. Um, and through all of this, um, our in-house customer support team are always on hand and are still there and available to help 24-7, 365 days a year. So should travellers ever need help or assistance, they can get it from us just by calling through to the team. I know that certainly in the last couple of months, they've helped to um, get people home, repatriate people from various areas of the world, India, the States, Fiji, to name a few. Um, so yeah, so that just really gives you an overview of what Click Care covers, um, and certainly the feedback that we've been receiving from customers on how seamless and easy it integrates and works for them, and the support they get has really been you know, pretty incredible, Dan. Yeah, I think, I think, it's, I think it's fab because, for example, those those of you that might not use a travel management company for particularly will have to, you know, searching around and talking to venues and talking maybe to your preferred suppliers and having to gather all of that information yourself. Whereas it, you know, you've got a really big you've got a big team there, Chris, haven't you, that look after so many different elements that can kind of bring all of that together. So and I know, I know over this time, a lot of people are going to be thinking about policies, procedures, and what's going to go into their travel policies and what 
you know, what a hotel's doing, what a rail doing, air doing to try and make that secure. But things are just changing so much at the moment that it's just really nice to know that you can kind of get all that information in one place. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's the really important thing is just knowing that there's there's somewhere they can get it in one place and they don't have to go off searching for the information. It's all contained in in one place. And our our teams, our customer support team, our account management team are all aware of that information and you know certainly sharing that out to to our customers as well as them being aware that it's all available for them to to get into twenty four seven. I think it's just really nice. I think people are feel. I think at the moment that I mean I probably certainly feel that. It's like if you travel somewhere, you just you you're there that it could just instantly change like that. And it's like, what happens if the borders close, or what happens with repatriation flights, and would I get moved to a different place, and all that kind of thing. And, and especially the international companies that are staggering their office location um, reopenings. So it might be that some of those offices are closed in the UK at the moment, but if they've got multiple offices around the world, then some of those offices might be open and moving people in between there, et cetera. So there's just so much to think about, isn't there? Yeah. And, um, and I think, you know, it's, it's a real, you know, difficult time because businesses who want to send people overseas they mostly have got travelers who are used to doing three or four overseas trips within the space of a fortnight and those travelers are and the businesses are having to make decisions as to now with the quarantine being in place which meeting or which trip is the most important that that traveler should go and do overseas um so that's an extra element of of uh, difficulty in the in the mix as well certainly do you think businesses will be more um obviously have really look at their travel plans now do you think because obviously zoom has been quite effective in having meetings but <clears throat> i think we've all agreed in the past that will never take away from the face-to-face -face interaction that you get from a meeting um but do you think that people will will still need to travel obviously as much as they did or do you think that you might see a change with that um it's, it's a really interesting question um We've certainly been talking to some of our customers where, you know, historically, you know, the account managers might have been saying to customers, you know, if you want to save money, have you thought about having a, a no travel week or a no travel month at some point during the year? And we've got customers who have said that just isn't possible. It's just not something we can do. They're now being forced into having to do no travel and they've still made their businesses work. Um, and I think there will be an opportunity for people to go you know, we need to relook at travel and really only travel when it's absolutely vitally necessary. And most probably that trip needs to have like a return on investment attached to it as well. Um, at the same time, you just can't replace the fact that, you know, when people get together, it's just, you know, different things come out of it and you can't replace that social interaction via Zoom. I'm having great stories of how organisations have overcome, you know, things at the moment via Zoom but you'll never be able to replace sort of like face-to-face -face meetings. Um, but I think it will just be that, you know, it will have to be, you know, for more important reasons that people actually get together in person. Um, I think that part, along with the traveller well-being, that, you know, organisations will need to look out for the, you know, the well-being of their travellers and not put them in any undue danger or risk of, you know, uh, of being on a train, for example, or an aeroplane, um, or in close proximity of lots of other people. So it's going to be an interesting few months, I think. Yeah, and I think the flexibility is going to be really important because it might be that the business need is for that person to go, but then it's like, is that, can that person go? Do they want to go? Um, <clears throat> and I think the other thing that was really big, I think before obviously COVID hit was um, sustainability. So yeah, it would be interesting from venues perspective and travel perspective about sustainability, because I think before this, you probably saw that lots of different places were putting up, upping their sustainability policies as well. And I think that's going to be something that people are going to look at quite a lot as well as part of their business travel plan. Yeah, massively. We've, we've definitely heard of organisations who are very keen to look at putting in a sustainable sort of like travel policy before this happened weren't sure how to try and do it and now it's almost like the, they've had their hands forced to do things differently and it will make them just relook at what that what they do um so yeah, yeah no awesome interesting time chris and thank you ever so much and congratulations on putting all that together because you know that it's just, it's a mammoth task <laughs> so and i think it kind of brings us in nicely to ryan because <clears throat> click obviously work really well with suppliers from both um, travel and 
hotels and Ryan's been a very busy bee <laughs> while all of this has been happening. You've, you've still been working, haven't you, Ryan? Yeah, so fortunate enough, um, we have kept our senior management team and some core members of staff so the hotel can operate. Um, we did remain, or we have remained open to key workers. So it's very much kind of rolling up our sleeves and getting involved with different things throughout what we would normally do. Um, but no, hotel is here. I'm still here. I'm sitting in one of our boardrooms. Um, so it's nice to still have a little bit of routine. And what, what would you say? How is, how, like, I know you've been manning the phones a lot at the hotel what how is how would you say it is at the moment i know we can kind of look at what's happened and etc but thinking about kind of now and the future what's kind of what's what's the vibe at the moment what's kind of going on on, on the phones what things are you getting in at the moment i mean it's a completely different industry at the moment i mean i've worked in hotels and travel my whole career and i've never seen anything like this whatsoever i mean we, we have three hotels within our portfolio and um, so we have park regis which is a very meetings and events driven property we have the holiday inn express over by birmingham airport which is a very transient accommodation driven property um, and then we have another property which is currently under renovation at the moment which is the night night hotel so for us at Park Regis, I think the main struggle is meeting and events has always been the core of our business. And subsequently, that is really what drives us. Um, we fill our bedrooms from selling our meeting space. And, and as we were approaching the end of the financial year, we were almost rubbing our hands together. You know, we'd had the, the best year we'd had. We had hit our hotel budget. We were looking at um, suppressing and um, really increasing all of our targets. And then I think when March hit, everything just fell off the, the back of a wagon, unfortunately. Um, it, it, it was really kind of a, a, a lack of understanding. For us, we, we wasn't sure, we weren't sure of the severity um, of the impact that COVID was gonna have. I mean, we were hearing things about vulnerable groups, we were hearing people with pre-existing um, conditions, and everyone was kind of making that joke of, oh, it won't, it won't resist the hot weather. Um, it will be gone by May, June time, everything will be back to normal. So I think we were very much banking on that. Unfortunately, as more um, guidance has come out, we were seeing more and more cancellations for meeting and events for quarter one, quarter two, and, and unfortunately now falling into quarter three. Um, however, we're very, very hopeful. Um, we are back open for the leisure market from the 4th of July. So as I said, we, we have remained open for key workers and actually the phones have been non-stop, maybe because I'm not used to answering the calls on reception. I mean, it, it, the volume is just incredible and um, people are constantly calling, asking when we're back open. I think, and, and Angela will probably touch on this a little bit later, but people are desperate just to get away. I think people have been stuck in their house for so long, whether it's a city break, whether it's an overseas break, people just want to go and stay for the night. And, and yeah, even though we are open, to key workers and we would love to accommodate their requests unfortunately until the 4th of July and we've got a little bit more guidance then we are having to say no for, for the leisure travel market yeah I think um I think the leisure travel is I'm dying to um get out there somewhere I mean beer gardens is a big one as well because obviously you've got that outside space <laughs> at Park Regis as well and I think we saw at Resorts World that all of our bookings just suddenly the NEC um the science show was cancelled followed by the photography show followed by a concert um and it just literally just went just completely disappeared all went to September October November but now we're seeing a lot of stuff being rebooked for quarter one quarter two quarter three next year and I think it's going to be really interesting to see what availability is like and whether I, I think there's going to be such a uh, I actually feel quite positively there's going to be quite a big demand and might not necessarily be the supply but as you say I think meetings I mean if we can have a I don't know if you can or if you haven't got your camera on if you could just show do any of you organize meetings because I'd just be really interested just to see if you can just pop your hand up if you organize meetings yeah quite a few of you um I'm, I'm really intrigued because you've put together a really, really great plan, quite detailed, which is fantastic. The more information, the better um, about how you can ensure, well, try to ensure safety um, within Park Regis for meters and events. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? 
Yeah, of course. I mean, from a recovery perspective, I think we were all very much hoping that it was going to be a V-shaped recovery model. Everything would drop and then a month later, everything would just go back through the roof and we'll be operating business as normal. Unfortunately, you know, that isn't happening and, and what we think it will be very much segment driven. You know, we will find that the leisure market will return fairly quickly to people are desperate to get away. The transient um, business travel side of the market will then start picking up and then the event side of the market will pick up. And um, I mean, Dan, I was on the phone to you earlier and, and we had an inquiry for a meeting for the end of June. So actually, you know, there, there is demand slowly increasing. Um, we, we are really trying to stay ahead of the game and speak to the likes of the Birmingham Chamber of Commerce and um, speaking to you know, the Hotel Agents Association, Hotel Booking Agents Association, speaking to the meetings industry and really jumping on the back of that. Um, we are very fortunate that we are an independent hotel and actually where many hotels have just closed their doors, we've actually retained our team, been able to work on such comprehensive plans. And um, so, and, and actually having never closed, the team have always been here to be able to work through that. So what we have done is we've created a full master standard operating procedure, um, which I'll share with you in a couple of moments. It's a very lengthy document, it's 47 pages. So if anyone wants some bedtime re reading, <laughs> let me know, I'd be delighted. But a lot of blood and sweat and tears went into it. And, we really, really had to take both our employee safety and our guest safety really seriously, and that has to be paramount. You know, we've had boardroom discussions about whether it's safe for our staff to make each other a cup of tea, because actually, you know, the touch points are there, and we've actually had to say, when you come back to work, unfortunately, you know, do not make your colleagues a cup of tea. Bring in your own mug, and you make your own drinks. You know, really simple things that we would take for granted had now become real discussion points. And so for us, we've split it down into two key areas. So we've looked at the accommodation and we've also looked at meeting and events. So I'll share with you um, something that we've just done as a bit of a master document. Is this the full 40 pages? <laughs> no, I didn't want to bore anybody. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Can you, can you guys see my screen? So the yeah. part of the COVID yeah. secure. So what we've done, so this is basically basically um, a breakdown of our 40 page SOP and we've broken it really into key areas. So we are looking at how we can look after our hotel, how we look after our guests, our team, and um, we've launched a new cleaning procedure called PRB Clean, which is our enhanced cleaning, um, how we've amended our check-in and check-out facilities, our bar and restaurant, meeting and events, and an accreditation. And this really has been debated at length. You know, a, a, an A4 document you think would be really easy to put together, but this has taken weeks of debate and deliberation. And, and then what we have done from the back of that is created our enhanced cleaning procedure. So we're really, really lucky. And what we found is as an independent hotel, we can make the decisions ourselves and just say, this is what we want to do. And we haven't got to consult a big brand. Uh, we are fortunate that our hotel is our head office and we can make the decisions in-house. Um, so this one, uh, bedroom cleaning procedure, again, has been breaking, broken down into nine steps. And this is really what we're sending out to our corporate clients to give them a little bit of reassurance in the market that we are taking our enhanced clean procedures very, very seriously. Um, so actually the biggest change that we've made is we've added an additional eight minutes per our cleaning routine. So each housekeeper and each room attendant would be preset a, a certain number of minutes to clean a room. Like I said, we've increased that to eight minutes to allow for the additional checks. We have brought in UV light technology. So once the rooms are cleaned and serviced by a um, housekeeper in full PPE, we would then have a senior room attendant would go in with a UV light. And it does look like something out of the science lab. They will go in, and turn all of the lights off, shut the windows, shut the curtains so you are in full darkness and physically go through each room with a scan and you know, ensure that those high touch point areas such as um, you know, door handles, um, light switches, TV remotes and things like that have been fully sanitised and there's absolutely no trace of anything. Park Regis was always sparkly clean and we were always fortunate that we've got a great housekeeping team, um, but it's really just that additional due diligence um, that we can say, right, the room has been checked and, and things that you see under a UV light, you are not normally used to seeing. It, <laughs> <laughs> it does show up a lot of differences, if I'm completely honest. Um, so that's what we've been doing in terms of an accommodation. 
um, provision. We've also invested a lot into keyless technology. And so what we are currently doing is working with our key lock provider. They are going to be updating all of our key locks. Uh, clients are then going to be able to download an app. They're going to be able to check in and check out through an app and actually use their key. So use their phone as a key to open their room. So that really eliminates any touch points. So they don't have to go through the traditional check in at reception and grab their key card. It's really eliminating that service. We, which is a great show. You know, we, we are a four-star luxury hotel. We are known for our service. And, you know, people want to check in at reception with a smile and, and see friendly staff. But unfortunately, we really have to look at it from a safety perspective. Reception will always be there, you know, going, greeting people as they arrive. Um, but yeah, we have had to look at it as a more of a safety perspective and eliminate those touch points. Uh, have you got one for your meeting rooms as well? I have. It was like I knew what you were going oh, to ask, Dan. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Fantastic. And Thank you. Really for us, you know, every... I, I, I really touch upon the whole independent piece, and it's so important for us because, as I said, we are able to make our own decisions and react quite quickly. And um, A lot of larger hotel brands have come out with blanket agreements that every single hotel will be completely bespoke. Um, we have spent a lot of time going through these processes and what we can do. So the, this is our standard operating procedure. So as you can see, it's 47 pages and it covers absolutely everything through from car parking, lifts, concierge, events, spa. Um, but the key thing for us really is meeting and events. So key changes that we've had to make is we fully had to reduce our capacities which is very unfortunate. And we have a beautiful meeting space on the top of the hotel with floor to ceiling windows that can usually seat up to 300. And that can now do just over 100. And that's with full two metre distancing. And there is talk, obviously, about the government reducing those guidelines down, and which is great for us because we can get back up to operating at full capacity. Um, but at the moment, every single chair, every single table, and every touch point has to have a two metre difference. And um, until a vaccine's put, put in place. We don't know how long that social distancing is going to last, but we are equipped and we are ready. I think advice for anyone out there that is booking meetings and events, make sure you are asking properties for larger spaces because it's very easy for them just to put you in a, a room that seats 14 for 14 people, but actually three months down the line, if social distancing is still in place and they don't have larger rooms available to upgrade you to, I think that's really where um, you will potentially come unstuck. So we're fortunate that we are already giving everyone larger rooms to comply with that social distancing. Um, we've removed non-essential items from all of our meeting rooms. So silly things that you would take for granted, such as pens, paper, stationary boxes, that is all now upon request. So we will have a sanitised um, selection of those items. They won't be put out. You will physically have to ask for them. And then we will provide them with you just to, again, ensure that people aren't picking up a pen and then putting it back. So there's a lot of extra staffing work involved, but if it means us being safe and secure, that's what we have to do. Um, we have upgraded our boardrooms to have Zoom technology. Um, I think we're hearing the word hybrid thrown around a lot and everyone has got their own kind of ideology of what hybrid is and how it's going to operate. Um, for us, it is operating by two ways. So via Zoom technology, whereas we can have four or five people around a table, and then the rest of the clients can, rest of the delegates can be on Zoom. Or the other option is we have an in-house AV company. So we're very fortunate that all of our AV is on site. We have technicians on site. And what we are finding is those larger events that we would normally take for 200 people, they're being reduced down to four separate events of 50 and being held regionally and then streamed, uh, live streamed. Or the other option is splitting into four separate rooms within the hotel and having a central streaming system through that. Um, I think there is positives and there's negatives. I mean, the big positive is obviously safety. You know, that is enabling everyone to have larger meetings safely and securely. Um, it is more cost effective. Um, but I think the big thing is nothing replaces that human interaction. Face to face simply just can't be replaced. Um, and actually, I think people get a lot more from the bar at the end of a meeting and having a, an informal discussion as opposed to actually sitting in a boardroom. You know, you can say things outside of a meeting space and catch up with colleagues that you wouldn't necessarily be able to say into a boardroom. I think, I think Ryan, if you don't mind me just asking that, 
I know there's some people on here that would normally, you know, client entertaining, dinners, all that kind of stuff that used to happen before. You know, how is your restaurant kind of prepared? Is that, has that been replaced so it's all kind of socially distanced as well? We have. So um, at the moment, we, our restaurant outlets are closed. So our restaurant and bar is closed until more information on the 4th of July. Um, for us, we have reevaluated our restaurant capacity as well. So we've had to make sure there's two metre space. Um, between all seats. We are hoping that we can open our outdoor terrace earlier, slightly early, because that is outdoor space. But again, subject to more government guidance, um, we are having to make sure that all of our staff can pre-serve and serve things with full PPE. So banqueting staff will now be fully um, covered with masks, gloves and adequate. Things like teas and coffees, you know, you'll be no longer able to just go and grab a cup of tea and coffee. Everything has to be pre-poured to really eliminate those touch points. I mean, I just can't imagine, I can't imagine going to a restaurant and seeing somebody coming over to me with a plate of food with full PPE. It's just going to be absolutely yeah. weird. It's just going to be so weird to see. It's completely different. And, you know, for us, again, it really takes away from that whole luxury, experiential dining um, facility. But... If safety has to come first, safety has to come first. Okay. What customers have been a bit more forgiving, you know, whereas they, a client would normally come in and have a, a five course fine dining experience or, you know, a, a luxury lunch. They are happy to have bento boxes and takeaway options and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's a big, big, big change for us, but think, we're working through it. Do you think the, uh, the, uh, the standard conference buffet will be gone from now on? What do you think? I do. And, you know, gone are the days where you can go and grab five chicken skewers, you know, five samosas and really just load up on your carbs. I think it is going to stop. Um, we are moving towards bento boxes. So each delegate will be given a bento box and, you know, um, dietary requirements and things like that will be obviously catered towards. But everyone will have their own preset box lunch and they will have to go eat it again within a within a two meter social distance so yeah i think the whole industry is going to change but we're yeah. very fortunate there's a lot of accreditations out there that are supporting so we've joined up with the quality and tourism to be one of their first hotels to have a safe clean and legal accreditation so that's given a lot of um reassurance back into the market and we're really working with them on the guidelines and they do a lot of research into what customers want and and how we can implement it best no, fantastic. I think one of the key things, and like I said, that I mean, it's fantastic all the work that you've done. I think it's great to have that in such a detailed document. And, uh, you know, that should hopefully give people reassurance when booking. I think one, one thing I would kind of say, looking at that as well, is when you are making bookings or approaching hotels is, make try to make try to look at that difference between what their capacity was before and what it is now and make sure that those smaller meeting rooms and i think small small meetings will still be really important i think people will invest in those smaller meetings and i think people miss having those smaller meetings but like you say not a hotel, not every hotel is the same and in particular with the big group and chain hotels it's it's all right to kind of have a standardized you know policy across all of your hotels but not every single group not every single hotel in the group is the same size same shape has the same facilities etc so it really is a case of everybody trying to figure out what they're all, they're all going to do individually isn't it completely completely and, and again it's probably the third time i've said it but that's really where us being an independent gives us a bit of a kickstart is everything is bespoke to us and what we do Oh, awesome. Well, good luck with the bookings on the 4th of July. <laughs> Independent day. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Ryan. Well, coming on now, we've got Angela from Travel Councils. Now, we all live a good holiday, don't we? <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure many of us have had to rearrange. I am actually supposed to be in Thailand at my best friend's wedding at the moment. And oh. I had a trip to Hong Kong and Australia. And when it first hit, I had to cancel that. And so, yeah, and I think we, we were just talking before the call and said we've kind of got to that stage now where it's a bit like well what have I got you know what's what's in the diary to look forward to well, like my son and we don't have any at the moment <laughs> um so Angela has come to brighten up our day how, how are you doing Angela? I'm okay I'm okay difficult circumstances of course and the travel industry has been totally knocked off its axis and you know we're all kind of um the blind leading the blind sometimes but you know it's um it's been a massive learning curve and um 
I don't know whether it was a great experience, but it's been an experience. Um, but you know, it's it's getting better, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to things getting a back to normal as much as they can. Um, so I yeah, think, I think even even people just talking to you about a holiday, I bet that just gets the juices going. Do you know what oh, I mean? It does, and you know, everybody wants to talk about a holiday, and everyone wants to go on a holiday, be it somewhere in the UK or for further afield. You know, you can get into a conversation quite easily um, with someone on, they're talking about holiday. You know, everywhere you go, the shops, the hairdressers, wherever. <laughs> um so yes it's uh it's it's a nice it's a nice job to have yeah no definitely i think <laughs> when travel people can travel of course <laughs> <laughs> i think travel counselors were voted um the number one uh, recently for how they've had their customer service and how they've dealt with customers so how are travel counselors you know supporting you and obviously supporting the industry and and how where do you kind of see this going in the future yeah, you, you are right. We were um, voted number one um, by uh, moneysavingsexpert.com um, for the way we've been dealing with uh, cancellations and amendments and helping people with their, with their holidays that have been cancelled. Um, so that's something to be really proud of. Um, and it, yeah, it, it, as I said, it's been such a tricky time and, and we've been totally thrown into um, this massive crisis but we are helping people and you know we're getting there day by day and I think the difference with uh, travel counsellors and the reasons why we came top is because your travel counsellor is always there um, you know you don't have trouble getting through to a travel counsellor we are there um, whenever you need us and I think that's what the difference is and I actually contacted all of my clients that had bookings affected in the summer by the coronavirus and I contacted them before they contacted me um, and that's the difference um, there's no holding on the phone for hours on end trying to get hold of an airline or a tour operator or most of them had shut their phone line so you couldn't get through to me anyway and then filling in online forms which is just not the way we go it's very personal with us and you know we we like that interaction and speaking to people so that's i think that's where we've stood out and that's the reason why we've come top of the shop dan i do have a script oh go on you don't then. have to prompt me <laughs> <laughs> no that's okay i was just enjoying chatting to you <laughs> I promise I won't repeat it. I, no. I do have a tendency to waffle and I thought if I write a script, I'll probably stick to it better and, and things won't go a bit crazy and we'll be here no for hours. No worries. <laughs> I, 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 thank you for everybody for, for joining us and this is just lovely to have this experience and thanks again to Dan for, for putting me on here. But um, I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about me. First, um, I'm originally from Birmingham, you can probably tell, um, but I live in um, Droitwich in Worcestershire with my lovely husband Graham. And I've worked in travel in various forms for 30 years. Um, I started off in leisure travel and then business travel and um, then last year I'd, I'd uh, had my own company, sorry, until last year um, in venue finding um, called Frontline Venues. So I've gone from venue finding to holiday finding. Um, and then a little bit about travel counsellors, because not, not everybody has heard of travel counsellors and that's quite a common thing. Um, so travel counsellors are a British company and we were founded in 1994 by a very forward-thinking businessman called David Speakman. At the time we were the only homework in travel company in the world and his vision inspired many. There's so many travel homework in travel companies now. We've got a head office in Manchester where we have around 300 staff, um, roughly around 1800 worldwide TCs stretching as far as Australia. Um, around 1300 of which are based in the UK. We're all self-employed and home-based um, but we are real, a real travel family and our amazing technology helps us um, connect with each other on a daily basis and we've got a TV studio in our head office in Manchester which brings us all together so um, all the places around the world, TCs around the world can can log into that and we're all connected by that. Um, 
we work with hundreds, literally hundreds of suppliers. So we can pull together any kind of trip. Everything can be tailored to you. So if you've got some wild and wonderful ideas and you don't know where to go to, to pull it together, we can do that for you. Um, we have our own unique financial trust, which protects customers' um, money in the event of a failure of an airline or a supplier. So we don't advertise. So this is probably the reason why people, a lot of people haven't heard of travel counsellors. We don't advertise. Um, we work on referrals and recommendations. Um, so why use a TC? So we believe in good old fashioned, great customer service. Um, it's all, all bespoke and personal to you and you don't get that online and in the high street. Um, we go above and beyond to make the customer's experience a really unforgettable one. Um, all the inquiries that I deal with and bookings, I treat them like my own. And when I get an inquiry from a client, I listen really carefully to what they are looking for. I get to know them. I get to know their likes and dislikes on a holiday. Um, I love hearing about their favourite holiday and what made it so memorable and try and create those lovely memories again for them. Um, I like to meet clients face to face wherever possible. Obviously, this isn't possible at the moment, but a Skype call or a FaceTime is always an alternative at the minute. Um, evenings, weekends, a time to suit um, yourselves. Um, unfortunately, there are issues um, that people don't probably realise with booking flights and hotels online separately as this means you're not um, at all protected. Um, I think, tra unfortunately, travel experts have, are often overlooked as the internet is um, so accessible, but the internet can't offer the service that we can. Um, so when things don't go to plan, like a virus, no one could predict. Um, one thing I often say to people is, when you're searching for a holiday, before you press the confirm button, ask yourself, would that company help you if things didn't go to plan, be it a virus or an ash cloud or terrorism or a, a reason why you needed to cancel your holiday? Companies show their true worth in times like this. So online reviews and how companies have dealt with this crisis um, before you hand over any cash, please um, sort of investigate that first. Um, a website called Trustpilot, I'm sure you've probably all heard of that, is a great tool for, for that. And we are actually rated excellent with five stars on Trustpilot, just adding that in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so from inquiry to arriving back home, I will be here. Um, I will even text clients when they're on holiday to make sure everything is okay. And I check clients in online as well. So literally tell me what you want for your holiday, pay for it and, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, we've got fantastic head office support, um, a 24 hour duty office, which both um, the TCs and clients can contact. So whatever time of day you can speak to someone if there's an issue. Um, so I think that proves how valuable we are in relation to online bookings. Um, and then coming back a little bit to um, the cancellation and refunds. Um, uh, you know, every, every booking, as I said, that I had through the summer, I've, I've now sorted the last one yesterday. Um, and they've been able to move their holiday to, to next year. And if, if they hadn't have had me, it would have been a nightmare for them because they've got full time work and they wouldn't have been able to sort that out themselves because they just haven't got the time to do it. So it's it's, you know, proves that using a TC is, is so valuable at times like this. Um, quite recently, we um, won the Queen's Award, which is um, the highest business accolade that can be given to a company and only 20, 220 sorry, uh, companies in the UK were recognised. So we, we got that in April and we're totally proud of that as you can imagine. And it was such a great bit of um, good news and lifted everybody uh, in such dark times for the travel industry. So we're really very proud of that. Um, 
As far as the future is concerned and destinations that are popular at the moment, um, obviously whilst we're all waiting for more clarification on the quarantine rules and the government FCO to lift the travel restrictions, um, people, as I said with Dan before, people are looking further ahead and definitely 2021 is, um, is on everybody's thoughts and um, I think we all need something to look forward to and so many people have had their holidays cancelled including myself um, and been really disappointed with all of that so UK destinations are definitely coming through for um, later this, in the summer and um, I've had some inquiries as well for uh, Christmas time where people want to hire huge houses and have family gatherings over Christmas. I think people have missed out so much on um, during the lockdown, missed out on family time. They're kind of thinking, well, let's, you know, let's use Christmas if we can to, to get everybody together, which is a fantastic idea. Um, the Mediterranean, uh, Greece and Cyprus are looking really good. And I think a lot of it is people are looking at who have re which countries have reacted really well to the um, virus, who's got the lowest levels and you know who's welcoming the Brits back to um, back to their their shores. Um, and then further afield, um, the Maldives, Caribbean, Mexico, Florida are really strong for 2021 and also Thailand. Um, people seem to be looking um, more long haul, I feel. Um, and I think it's probably because people have had a lot of time to dream during the lockdown and maybe thinking life's too short to save a few years time. We'll go on that holiday. Let's let's do it now because we've we've all seen the devastation of this uh, evil disease. Um, we also have just started offering a new product um, called TC Flexible Promise. And this um, means that certain holidays can be amended up to eight weeks prior to departure for no amendment fees. Obviously, you would have to pay any difference in the cost of the holiday, um, but we, we wouldn't charge amendment fees. Now, terms do apply and it doesn't apply to every single holiday. Um, but I'd always talk that through with you on inquiry stage. So if you are looking for something flexible and, and it doesn't fall under a TC flexible promise, I can make suggestions um, and try and help and, and see where we can go for, the, for that. Um, so Dan, I didn't ask you at the beginning, do you send uh, details to people for social media, for following and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. So I'll send an email. I'll send this recording as an attachment to everybody on the call and copy you guys in. And then obviously, if anyone's got any, we'll answer some questions on the call today. But then if anyone's got any further questions or wants to talk to anybody individually afterwards, then you can do as well. That's cool. OK, so I, I just wanted to say that my social media pages, I put offers on. There's travel updates, there's inspiration um, or you can email me with your email address and I'll add you on to my database. We don't bombard you with loads of e emails, but our emails every Thursday are really informative and they're fantastic. They have recipes on um, different places that you probably wouldn't have even thought of in the world to travel to. So it's, it's really interesting, not just a boring offer every now and then. So yeah, that's a really good thing I'd recommend. And that's about it. Thank you. No, you're welcome. I think that, I think it's great that you touched on UK breaks because I think a lot of people yeah. will might just might look at travel councillors and think, oh, overseas, you know, you've got that exactly. beautiful sky behind you, which we won't find here for a few weeks. No, I'm not getting the suntan though. <laughs> We do, but um, yeah, so I actually put an inquiry into Angela because I'm working, I was looking at my uh, friend's 40th in January. We wanted, he's wanted a house with a pool and in, in the UK and she came up with about, I think, God, I think there was about 12 options. No, Angela loads. Um, and he absolutely loved them. So that was a great idea. And I've seen the stuff you've been posting out about Christmas as well. I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think if anyone's got any, if you're thinking about inspiration or if you're thinking about, oh, you just want to have a chat and see where you might want to go to next, then Angela's definitely for you. I can highly recommend her as well. So thank oh, you so thank much, you. Angela. Um, so we'll open it now. I'm, I also, I am just interested, and um, you can use the reaction box as well. Does anybody, because you do get private PAs and 
you get PAs that look after high net worth individuals as well. But has anyone ever been asked to look at a holiday for their boss? I'm just interested. No? Because I have, there are some people that have literally, you know, their boss really wants them to organise their holiday as well. And I think that does happen sometimes. So watch out for those, Angela. They'll be coming. Yeah, for you. <laughs> so just to open it up, if anyone's got any questions, please take yourself off mute. Um, please, if you've got any questions for any of our panellists, Chris from Click Travel, Ryan from Park Regis, Angela from Travel Counsellors. Um, Stuart, you've got a question, haven't you? Yeah, I'm over. I'm overly eager today. I'm very sorry. That's okay. um, yeah, I just I just wanted to say thank you to all four of you. Really, um, I, I travel travel consult, consultancy is something that I've um, I've looked at in the past. Um, I normally sort of short haul flights, book it direct, um, but I've got a, a young family now and stuff, and I'm looking to go long haul. So I'll uh, I'll be in touch, Angela. Great. Um, <laughs> my, my questions are more for Ryan and Chris, really. Um, so my my background is I run Big Bear Comms, um, and prior to coronavirus, I was working with. Um, the Park Hall Hotel in Wolverhampton, um, the Glee Club, comedy clubs everywhere down from Glasgow. Um, and I was jo also just about to publicise the um, Midlands presence at MIPIM in Cannes. Um, so my question, it's a, it's a fairly obvious one in considering my background, but I, I'm quite interested in how your commute, particularly you Ryan, how you're commu communicating your, your um, changes with press, because I, I, I know that you did cover um, everything that you, you're saying to direct customers have you invited the local tv cameras in or newspapers to look at all the changes you're having to make and then also to to chris similarly all the all the changes you're able to support hotels in making how are you communicating that to the wider hospitality industry definitely so we're quite fortunate that we've got an in-house marketing team and um, so we've got an amazing marketing manager who has been fortunate enough to do a lot of press releases for us and um, so we are of constantly communication with our own customers and we're utilizing linkedin quite a lot now i think for us it's really important not to be selling and actually it's all about raising awareness to people and um, so i mean linkedin you know we, we put our first video out there about what we were doing we wanted to do something different and video video it instead of actually going out there with a with a blanket email to people um, and i think within the first day we got about five and a half thousand views so there was a great reach on that and um, in terms of media coverage and um, we are very fortunate we were on bbc midlands today last week um, so we've got great connections with the bbc so they actually came in had an interview with our manager director and um, done some videos for the rooms and what we were doing and our new cleaning policies it was really funny the the first um, headline was you're not in a science lab you're actually in a park regis bedroom because we were showcasing the um, uv light technology so <laughs> we're really really fortunate that we've got really good connections within the media and i think because we we're one of the first hotels to really go out there and say this is what we're doing this is how we're resolving it there's been a lot of traction from that Excellent. I, I think it's it's particularly something that I want I want to talk to uh, to talk to the Glee Club about in detail because obviously they've been hugely affected by by this. And it, um, I, I'll, I'll, I've got a second question, but I'll let I'll let Chris respond first. Mm. Ah, oh, um, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess a bit, a bit like um, Ryan was saying, we've got you know an in-house marketing team um, that are all over this sort of stuff, and we're doing a lot of work with um, industry journalists, so the likes of Skift, of Business Travel News, um, doing a lot of work with with their journalists, um, and yeah, obviously using the likes of LinkedIn a huge amount. Um, but um, the, our account managers deal with a lot of sort of like the, the actual customer communications. Um, and we've got a supplier manager who looks after, um, you know, contacting with our suppliers, such as Ryan, for example, um, so that we've got the updates coming in from the hotels as well. Um, but yeah, our, our marketing team um, look after a lot of the, the media side of things, really, um, which is heavily sort of like business travel um, orientated. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, my, my second question, and I, I'll have no more because I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to hug. Um, but what do you, what do you, I think also the, the speakers, but also the whole panel, what, what do you think the impact of um, major tourist attractions like tourists, uh, like um, Chester Zoo reopening uh, is going to have? Um, I know it's, it's started to have a bit of controversy recently because there's, um, with the schools not being fully open, there, there is a question as to why zoos and other attractions are, are being opened. Um, but I think that they're, they're one of the organisations that I've watched quite carefully throughout coronavirus 
and I found um, similar to what you were saying, Ryan, in terms of the education aspect um, and the amount of content that they were giving away from free. I think I think they really handled the um, PR and marketing approach really well, and now that it looks like they're going to be one of the first to open. Yeah, I, I, well, I think zoos. The fact that zoos are open because I I did say why well, McDonald's drive through open and not West Midlands Safari Park because yeah. that's just crazy to me. West. And when you've got kids off school and, you know, I can't imagine, I've spoken to so many moms and dads that are just literally like, what on earth have I got left to do? They've done festivals in the back garden, spa experiences. They've got the kids to pretend that they're checking them in and going to the airport on holiday and all these fantastic ideas. But, you know, when that announcement came out the other day, I'm not a parent, but on my heart just sank when I thought to myself, they can't go back to school until September and they've had all this time to try and keep them busy. I think zoos and, and, and particularly places like West Midland Safari Park opening, because they were talking about opening Alton Towers first. And I just thought to myself, you know, zoos are outdoor, outdoor spaces where you're not sharing necessarily, you know, or you're not on a ride sharing you know, with different people. I, I put my personal opinion was that was that it's a fantastic thing that they're doing, and I think it's really great to be able to save the zoos as well. I'm going to be going to West Midlands Safari Park. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, no. I, I'm I think... out. I'm, I've run out of things to do, so yeah, it's um, it's a, it's a, it's a point. It's an education opportunity as well, isn't it? So. Yeah, more so than the back garden where I've already built a beach and like got my hammock <laughs> up and all kinds of mad stuff. Yeah, I must admit, some, some of the account managers that I, that I look after, um, the amount of them that have been having teacher training days, and I'm like, well, is that is that you actually getting taught by the teachers? And they're like, no, no, uh, like, I just want a day off. So, um, <laughs> um, but I also think, you know, as well as it being good from an education and being outside sort of element, I think having leisure attractions like zoos reopening will just start to restart a bit of confidence out there as well. And people, you know, will go, actually, I've been to the zoo today and tell their friends and go, it's all right, actually. And it just starts to, you know, I think reinvigorate people's um, confidence in being out and about and, and going to places. Mm -hmm. So it can, it can only be a good thing. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. No, thank you very much, Stuart. Great questions. Really appreciate it. Anybody else got a question before we go today? Anybody else want to raise anything? No? Okay, fantastic. I just want to say massive thank you then to all of you for joining us today. I hope you found that really insightful. Um, I think um, as we were, we did one of these sessions the other week, I think it'd be important to come back to something like this because I think things are changing so much and I think it would be good to kind of revisit this again at another time. Um, so I just want to say a huge thank you to Chris Ryan and Angela for joining us today. I will send this recording over to you um, afterwards, but uh, have a fantastic day, everyone, and I'll let you know what's coming up on email soon. So thank you for joining us. Take thank care. you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.